Hello and welcome. I very much enjoy odd and unusual brass instruments and I have an array of three of these in front of me now. I've got my Besson N harmonic cornet which has an early sort of compensating valve design. I have got this, the Meredith open tone cornet which aims to have a very free flowing design through the valves and this, the Couturier conical bore cornet which has again a number of uh, interesting design principles. Now I'm not going to talk about these instruments in any depth because I've done separate videos on them but they all have unusual features and were patent protected at their time of construction to enable them to aid the player to make performance easier um, even though their design is far more complex and far more difficult to build they were designed with the principle of making performance easier in some way or another. However, unlike these instruments here, where the unusual qualities actually produce a benefit for the person playing them, I'm instead going to show you an instrument made by a reputable manufacturer that has innovations and complexities and whatnot that are completely pointless. They make the player's job more difficult. And I am talking about the Conqueror by CG Con. In front of me are two examples of the Concora Cornet. This one that's rotating like a rotisserie chicken was made in 1906 and this one in much worse condition was made in 1909. However, before I sort of dive into why I think the design of these instruments is a bit pointless, um, I just want to briefly touch on the model names. Uh, Con has a tradition of making very grandiose decisions about what they're going to call their instruments. In the late 1800s you could go out and purchase an instrument that was called an ultimatum, an ultimatum model instrument. Then later on you could buy a Victor, a Con Victor instrument. Uh, I in fact have a Con Victor Cornet right here. Um, and you could also purchase instruments at various times that had their brand name Con in the title as we have with the Conqueror models here and then later on with an instrument called the Conquest, uh, both misspelt deliberately with C-O-N-N. Um, in fact at one time you could buy an instrument from them which was called a Perfected Wonder. And if you are flicking through brand materials and marketing bum fluff trying to find a new instrument to buy and you came across one called the Perfected Wonder, you would probably think, well, that's something to go and have a look at, particularly when other brands would call things like Standard Class or Class A or things like that. Con made an effort with their brand names, sorry, with their model names. They also made an effort to try and innovate and make their instruments different from uh, what was offered at the time. So I'm going to stop this thing from rotating and we're going to dive into some of the peculiarities of these designs. Taking a look just briefly at a standard cornet, we can see that the manufacturer of this instrument has tried to uh, remove as much complexity as possible. The air comes in through the lead pipe and it goes through a couple of turns into the third valve here. From the third valve it goes through this little tube into the second valve and then into the first valve and then out the main uh, loud bit. Some cornets would do this in reverse so the air would come through the lead pipe and into the first valve and then from the first valve into the second valve into the third valve and then out through the big noisy bit. They were the two standard ways of dealing with the flow of air through uh, an instrument such as this. And because the valves are right next to each other, it sort of makes sense to have the air go through the shortest and least complex path possible. But when the designer of the Conqueror and some of Con's other instruments came along, they thought, no, we're not going to do it like that. We're going to do it a bit different. With the Conqueror, the air comes through the lead pipe. There's only got one turn in this lead pipe, and it goes into the second valve right in the middle for some reason. Reversing the instrument, we can see that it goes through this tuning slide through to the third valve. And then from the third valve, it jumps through this loop of tubing through to the first valve. 
and then from the first valve out the big noisy bit. Um, so this wasn't the first time they did one of these weird designs. Their ultimatum corner did something similar. I have no idea why you would choose to route your airflow in this particular way. It doesn't make any sense to add complex bits like this tubing here and this sort of weird hop of tubing there. I don't know why they would do that, but nevertheless they did. The second thing that they did which baffles me is to do with the valve guides. Now piston valves like this are sort of like a lift or an elevator, you want them to go up and down. If they go side to side or if they rotate round they're not going to line up with you know the ports that they need to line up with. And so they have a thing called a valve guide which uh, keeps them in place. This is one of the standard approaches for aligning valves. We have a little bar that goes through the middle of this valve here here, and that lines up with a groove that runs part way through the uh, length of the valve casing. These, this bar sits inside that groove and it prevents the valve from rotating. This one is uh, not the only approach, there are some instruments which have just a little simple notch on the side of the valve and that lines up with a single groove and keeps the valve in line. But these are the two standard ways that most manufacturers will choose to make their valve guides. Uh, Con again saw this and thought no that's not enough for us, we're going to have three valve guides. And so if we take a look at the valve we can see we've got a valve guide there second one there, and a third one there. In my mind this is completely pointless. One valve guide does the job perfectly fine, two valve guides does the job perfectly fine, uh, although with two valve guides you can sometimes put the valve in 180 degrees around the wrong way, uh, and so you have to take it out and realign it properly. But with three valve guides spaced equally around the circumference of the, uh, of the circle here, you've got the option to put this valve in three different ways. So we can take the valve, we can put it in and have it there, we can rotate it 120 degrees and have it there, or we can rotate it another 120 degrees and have it there. So there's three different ways to insert this valve and have it registered so it doesn't rotate any uh, significant amount, and yet two of those three options prevents the instrument from working at all because the, po the ports in the valve won't line up with the uh, tubing uh, options on the instrument and so it won't work. And so that's the second design choice with this instrument that doesn't make any sense to me. I suspect these two instruments were made in different factories because on the older 1906 one I've got this stamp here which says our label factory 34 whereas on the newer one from 1909 we've got a different label uh, and it's in a different place too, it's on the back of the second valve instead of the front and this one says union label, so I don't know what those mean uh, specifically. The last thing I'll point out is differences on the bell engraving, we've got the conqueror with a dash between the con and the cura bit, CG con maker in Elkhart, Indiana, and then on the older one we see the word the conqueror, CG Con Maker Elkhart Indiana, without a dash between the con and the cura. So it's a couple of changes there, as well as the, the, the design of the uh, engraving is also a little bit different. But as this would have all been hand done, I imagine, um, that probably explains why there was some differences in it. If you've got any questions that you want to ask about this instrument, or you have further information about it that I'm perhaps missing, then I would really love to hear from you in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for watching.